Hey there viewers, Erico here, Self Main Auto. Welcome back to our channel. We've got a, another vehicle here to work on. We've got this 97 Buick LeSabre. Came in and the customer says, the left rear window will not go down. So we're gonna have a look at that, see what that is and see if we can fix it for them. So I guess first thing first, we'll make sure it doesn't work. Doesn't work from the master switch. It doesn't work from this switch, but uh, I do hear some clicking going on inside the door. Um, like a relay type click, pretty light click. I don't know if you can hear it. Probably not, it's pretty light. Um, okay. Being that we got that clicking sound back there, it's probably uh, a good assumption to think that we have power and ground and everything going back there, but uh, if we assume we could get ourselves in trouble. So we'll look up a wiring diagram here on the computer real quick and uh, probably the easiest thing to do, maybe pull that rear window switch out and see if we have what we need there. And if we have everything there, then we can uh, you know, dig a little deeper into the door to see what it is, you know, motor seized up or something of that nature. Put our vehicle info in here. Let's see, power windows. Oh, good, they're all on one page. Now let's see, all the other windows work. And they all run off the same circuit breaker, so we don't have to worry about that. We just want to find that left rear switch and see what that looks like. So that's that one right there, left rear switch. So it appears. Um, let's see. From power window, window the motor, 101, let's see where that goes. Okay, so that should be a full-time power. Okay, and what's that switch to? So I'm just kind of poking around here, and they stay grounds. Okay, so our blue wire here. Let me zoom in on this. If we go back to that switch and we take it apart, our blue wire here should be a full-time power, you know, with the key on, and uh, as we toggle it. Um, uh, up or down, you know, um, these wires will just, you know, want to become a power wire, want to become a ground wire, uh, because currently in the position that they're in right now, with the switch in a neutral position, if we follow this up, uh, that should be a ground. The dark green wire here should be a ground. So that's how that works. Um, in the resting position, uh, that's a ground, that's a ground. Of course, this just goes through the motor circuit. Ground's over here behind the left kick panel. So uh, let's just go back there and see what we have. It's a pretty pretty simple simple switch. Uh, we should be able to uh, test pretty easy. All right, let's see if... Uh, ashtrays, you don't see ashtrays in cars much anymore. We'll see... Uh, Yeah, if I seem a little out of it today, it's because it's Saturday and I don't want to be working. But, got to pay for my Obamacare, which is awesome. $800 a month for health care I never use. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Enough griping. So this dark blue wire here. That must be our full-time power. What's the other dark blue? I'm gonna go back and look at my diagram. Let me go print that out. I decided not to print it out. So, um, 
yeah, one of these uh, should be a full-time power, which is this one here. And then what we should have is technically, let me just uh, see if I can hook onto this thing. And hook onto that. That should, like I said, that should be our full-time power. That's the one I just tested. And it will just still. Anything I touch that's a ground should light up, which if our front window switch is good, all of, the, all of these wires should be providing a path to ground currently. Um, so that tells us a couple things. That tells us um, you know, that our front window switch is good because if it was bad, we would have a broken path uh, to ground uh, because this switch won't work unless the front switch works, um, if that makes sense. so. Uh, so that's that's a good quick test you can do right there. Um, the next thing we can do is check the switch operation. And according to the wire diagram, the other dark blue and brown wire are a function of up and down. I should have printed it out. <laughs> now I'm doing some guessing, but I do know it's these two, so let's see. Make sure I got a good connection here. Okay, I got a good connection. Okay, they must run. There we go. So you can see, I get this connected right, working the switch up and down. It is passing power through the up position and the down position there. Reach it, but these other two wires, the purple. Let me get a minute to try to reach up front and do this. The purple and the dark green run from the front switch. And if I operate the front switch. See that toggles like that. That was a lot better connection there. Try this again on this one. Well, I think we get the idea that uh, we definitely know how many electrical problem back here. So anyhow, I won't do any more further testing on that. So it's pretty easy. A, a power window switch is pretty easy to confirm. I mean, it has to have on this. In this case, it has to have power going to it, and then. Uh, you know, just toggles back and forth to share that power uh, and send it to the load. Um, so what we will do at this point is uh, take the door panel off, make sure it's getting to the motor. I don't know what I'm hearing clicking. Unless it's just a seized motor. There is, according to the diagram, there's no relays or anything in here. So it uh, looks like we got a couple of screws here in this door pole. Little trim panel there to come off and uh, Probably a few uh, little plastic uh, pole nails there, and we'll get this thing off and see what the heck's wrong with this. I don't see connectors like that anymore. Oh, well, did you bend a pin? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Nowadays, the pins are micro thin. These things are like fence posts. Technology. There goes that one, down into the depths. Let's see, good thing we're taking it apart. So those were 10 millimeter. This looks like it's gonna take a T25. Back in the days when doors had screws. Also, back in the day when you look at a piece of plastic and it breaks, that is one huge advancement I would say is the plastics. They're much uh, more forgiving nowadays, it seems. Yeah, we'll go get down there. Okay. 
that screw back. Oh, fun part. There should be one more bolt here. I'm gonna try to get this reflector out. I believe these got two two lock tabs on them. One on the top, one on the bottom. We can get it out one piece. There we go, there. Oh, it's a big one. Ah. So that's what I was trying to get is this, uh, you know, when this goes in the door like that, you've got to push down these little ratcheting tabs. My mistake, I was looking for one, a single one in the middle here, like there is on the back side, or on the bottom edge. So this appears that it could also be a light, not in this model. Anyhow. No harm, no foul. Good thing we look because there's another screw behind there. All right, I think that's everything. Oh man, take a nap. Use one of them. Push retainers. Looks like we're missing. Oh yeah, there's still, still one stuck in the door there. So that's what they look like. What do they do? They just click in here. Okay. Well, the hard part's done, I think. Get the door panel off without shredding it. Now, looks like somebody's already been here. So that's always a good clue. It looks pretty old, but the car's pretty old. Where's our motor? There's our motor. Let's see what we can do here. Let me get some of this crap off here. our door pull bolts to. Stick that to the side. Want the wires through our motor. And I'll take this other one. That's missing a nut right there. Mechanically, got a little bit of fuzz growing on here. <laughs> Old dust bunny. Um, yeah, unless the motor seized up, I gotta believe that it's receiving a signal. So where's our switch? We'll take our switch. We still got the key on, so we're in good shape there. We'll plug our switch back in. And we can test these wires right at the motor. Let me get my test light. Back for one of these. 
this should, should just be a switching power and ground. It'll switch from side to side. And so long as it lights up in both directions, it's kind of redundant as far as which one is which. And I would think if the motor was seized, we'd be blowing a circuit breaker, but... Yep, so you can see we're getting power with our up and down positioning. Set this test light back down. Yeah, so it's this motor right here clicking. Well, I didn't fix it. So, I would say it's probably safe to assume that we need a new motor. Let me see if I can wrangle us up a motor and we'll get this thing fixed up. And somebody's definitely been in here. They didn't put this uh, wire connector back where it belongs either. That's interesting. I wonder what they were, uh, wonder what they were doing. Who knows, you know? They probably chase this thing around in a circle like I'm gonna. Yeah! Yeah, I'll get that a little bit later. Okay, let's see what we can find. Alright, we're back. We've got this new motor here. Or a window motor. Wait, I've done a window motor in a while, I'll tell you that. Usually you get. Uh, Regulator assemblies. Everything's a regulator. From China. Let's see. I turn the key back on, grab our switch, whatever I did with that, plug that in. Before we go too far here, let's see. Unplug this. Plug it into our new motor. It's like they only even click it in because I don't want to fight with it. Ah! Okay. So that is a confirmed, well, it's not really a confirmed fix because we're not done. I suppose the regulator could be seized up, but this motor's not even getting warm. So let's grab some tools and we'll get this little guy swapped out of there. So this reminds me of a story. And because it's Saturday and we can tell stories, I was working on a Ford something, Windstar I think it was. It was a van, it was a Ford van. Old school style regulator, it had this big honky tonk spring in there and the scissor style uh, regulator, such as this one, similar to this one, but not the same. You know, the Ford with that big half moon gear there and all that business. And I was just a young buck in the automotive industry and I don't remember what I was doing, but for some reason I had to take the window motor off. And the window was in the all the way down position and the glass was out of the door. Well, I'm here to tell you, when you release that and that window's all the way down and that spring is wound tight, about the same time that motor comes off, that regulator hits the roof at about 9,000 miles per hour. And I remember it just, just grazing. I was hanging on to like the tin or something like this as I was pulling the motor off. And that regulator come by and just took the skin off all my knuckles. <laughs> but it sounded like a 12 gauge going off inside the door. It made a hell of a bang and, and it scared me, but it didn't even give you time to flinch. So, uh, and I remember going back to read the directions on that one and there was a pin or something or other that you had to stick like a, you know, a 3 16 drill bit in, relief the tension off the motor, then remove it. So, I say that, say this, I just went and looked just for the heck of it. I'm pretty sure if you do these in the up position, because this is a spring that assists it to go up, um, I assume if we do it in the up position that we're safe, and I just went and double checked, uh, because I don't want to be in that situation again, which, you know, with the glass and everything, and it can't really happen, but I just thought it was, it just reminded me when I, I saw that spring, saw the motor, and, and uh, you know, flashback 20 years. <laughs> In this case, we're safe. Yeah. That little 
little studs turning on that one. Uh, deja vu. Now I gotta reach my hand back here. It is a nut, so I gotta be getting a wrench. Super convenient. Sweet guy. Yeah. So if you're reaching back there, is an eight millimeter out of ten. Okay. Well, it feels like it has a considerable amount of tension going up. Uh, where's my upholstery tool? There it is. Oh, excuse me. Of course, it may be when it's stuck. It was in the trying to go up position. I don't think they have anything on the back side, maybe a pilot or something, where that uh, gear lines up. Yeah, just pilots, like I thought, pilots in that little hole. Looks to be original, got a GM number on it. GM can't make them last that long nowadays, I tell you. I, just, I think I do one GM regulator a week. Uh, you know, them cheap, you know, the Chinese plastic ones there they put in. Well, I'll take a little bit of their excess grease here. Put it on our pilot bearing. Spin this motor a little bit to get it to line up. Yep. I like that grease on my fingers. We'll use the instructions it comes with. I don't have a rag. Okay. We'll click it in. We'll plug it in. Right there, all relaxed. Put nuts back on it. That's a pretty easy job, really. Of course, got one nut stuck in my impact here. We got to get out yet. Here we'll use the test light that'll work. Look at that. We got to reach back in there, aren't we? We can get started. Okay. sucker up but I think we've already seen our confirmed fix here oh, I need like one more joint in my hand there we go got it done okay Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, they don't go down very far. But the good news is it works. We did a correct diagnosis with some simple testing. So let's throw this thing back together. Up down here. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, that's right. We're going we're gonna to loop that back on where it belongs, weren't we? If I didn't do that, you guys would tell me about it. Even though I'm not the one that did it. Man. What the heck? We'll help this guy out, though. Find it. We'll leave it better than we found it. How's that? thing out. We'll hook it back up here where it belongs, hopefully. Click it back in, just like that. One, two, barbecue. The only thing with these, what they call them, water shields, or whatever they are, these old ones. Well, you peel them off once, or you lose all your sticky. I did watch a YouTube video one time with a very popular YouTuber. I don't say any names, but he tore apart a door and something. And I thought it was a joke, but man, the guy went in there like a caveman and just like destroyed this water shield. It only takes a second to take them off the right way, but he just like grabbed it and like ripped. Like, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Calm down, man. But I think I does a lot of yelling anyways, so anyhow, we all do them a little different. I just try to do them without breaking stuff. That's always my goal. So the motor did come with some like uh, blind nuts and some screws, so it must be it fits various applications. I'm gonna go see if I've got a nut that'll fit that because that was missing. And I'll get us a little bit of masking tape so we can put this thing back together. Get some of this old stuff off there and just just to hold it up till we get the door panel on. A new nut and washer here. Fits the right size. Appears to be a six millimeter. All right, now they can reef on that baby. Got some green tape. It's not real sticky, but should do the job for us. I hope. came off it just pretty much fell off. Not saying that that was right. There is a slight little lip that it should go in up here. Yeah. So on the back of this door there you'll see these little metal or Our plastic little ramps drives slides up onto sits down into but not by very much so that's why that came off like it did a lot of the front ones had a big lip that they sat up into you almost had to tip the door panel out hook them in and then 
reflecting down, but not this one. Doesn't appear to be nice. Yeah, all the pins line up, they push in nice and easy. I guess we'll just leave it at that. Basically just reverse our procedure. Try not to drop anything. ones in first because it'd be nice to drop that one in the beginning instead of the end. <laughs> things here this uh, lock this tab on this end has to go in the door first and you have to line up the mechanism here on the back to the lock rod I'll roll that down it's getting hot here so you got a couple things going on let's see if we can do it we haven't even had any casualties yet I want to start now fiddle with this and see what the heck is going on. Okay, I got it now. Should be good. Alright, she's doing a full stroke now. So all it was is, uh, you know, look at it, there's the metal rod that goes up and down, there's that little yellow plastic tube on it. And that must have been binding up, it's sticking out just a little bit. I just essentially pushed that little plastic tube back on and, and everything went together good, so. Now it works. Wonderful. It's got to tighten that screw up and we're all done. Now, almost done. Almost forgot that. Okay. I should leave it out for the next guy. Okay. Now we're done. viewers that's it for a Buick Saber and the window motor um, I apologize for the poor attitude probably going to this job or just the <laughs> lack of explanation maybe um, like I say it is Saturday I'm a little frustrated to have to work but 
you do what you have to do when cars are piling up and like I said you gotta we gotta pay for our health care and all the other crap the state takes out of us so um, but that's neither here nor there so I'm not gonna mention that again um, but you can see the uh, the switch system on those is pretty simple so I hope you understand it you know it basically just had you know a full-time power and, and the switch just toggles back and forth from that power uh, you know to a ground and it just you know reverses polarity on that motor for you know depending on whether it goes up or whether it goes down and and the reason we had the other two wires running back there not just three it was because we have wires from the master switch uh, which essentially work in the same same fashion um, so you it's it's pretty simple uh, I'll put a link in the description below where you can get a wire diagram if you're working on yours uh, I found some free ones online that you could use the program we use is pro demand uh, it is a pay service. A lot of people ask me, you know, what we use for our information and our, you know, wiring diagrams and stuff. Um, most shops will use, you know, Mitchell On Demand or Pro Demand, MotoLogic, All Data, something of that fashion typically uh, because we need access to as much information as we can get because we could pull out this Buick and pull in, you know, a Ford or a, a Nissan or something. We need to be able to have that information in our hands. So paying for it is just the cost of doing business, I guess. Um, at any rate, that was a, a super simple fix. Might take you, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, start to finish. By the time you diagnose it and repair it, and uh, you know, get yourself a motor. They had them right in stock. The motor is relatively cheap, and, and the good news is we didn't have to replace the whole regulator uh, like we do in a lot of the late model stuff that is made out of plastic and cables uh, because that's a great idea. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give us a thumbs down. Leave your comments, questions, and concerns below. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and like us there. And if you want to connect with us socially, we can be found on Google Plus too. So you can check us out there and join our circles. Add us to your circle. Whatever you do on Google Plus, you can do it there. So just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Well, thanks for watching.